So I've officially been in Serbia for almost exactly two years now, which really blows my mind. I feel like in one sense, these last two years have lasted so long and I feel like I've lived a few different lifetimes within them. And at the same time, they also feel like they've really flown by. And during this time, I have not been back to Canada at all. I was kind of dreading making the trip all the way home. And as I mentioned in my last video, the last time that I was in Canada, it left a pretty bad taste in my mouth just with all of the restrictions that they had going on and stuff. So I was just not in a huge hurry to make it back. But of course, family calls. So I decided to make a trip home and if I'm being completely honest, even though I don't necessarily have the most love for Canada anymore, living in Serbia at sometimes has been really difficult. Um, it's really difficult not knowing the language. It's really difficult not having your friends or family around. It's really difficult dealing with lawyers, like not being a legal resident in whatever country you're trying to live in makes life a lot more complicated. And also not being able to really work a normal job here means that I am completely reliant on myself for income and my own ability to find jobs online. And although I have been really lucky and this is, I know that I have people asking me for this video and I'm sorry that I haven't put it out yet. Um, but this is something that I have done a really good job of is learning how to copyright and create an online income and become a freelancer. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't come with its own stresses. And I would be lying if I said that I don't spend at least some of my time and definitely a lot of my time before this trip just daydreaming about being back in Canada and working a normal serving job and making more than enough money to live. So. Going back to Canada on this trip was definitely a vibe check for me and I there was a little part of me that was wondering if I was going to make the decision to move home. And of course there were some things that were really really nice about being home but there were also some things that I didn't necessarily love. And so as you can imagine I was very deep into comparison mode while I was there because I was really trying to get down to whether or not I would consider leaving Serbia and moving home to Canada. And in this video, I'm going to get into some of the positives and negatives of both countries. So first and foremost, I just wanna say that living in a new country is freaking challenging. And I've done a lot of traveling, so I didn't really think that moving to Serbia was gonna be that hard, but having to deal with the residency and the paperwork and finding an apartment and not being able to ever speak your language, blah, 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 like it does honestly get so taxing. So if you have a friend that is living in a different country right now, definitely shoot them a message and check up on them because I tell you, this is not for the faint of heart. It is not an easy thing to do. So going home to Canada, like there was that little piece of me that was just like, wow, like life here is just so much easier. First and foremost, being able to speak your own language, being able to just openly communicate with people, like seeing a barista whose hair I like and being able to be like, hey, love your hair. What's your hair care routine? Or just chatting with people on the street, seeing a little kid riding a bike and like being able to say hello and stuff like that. It's just... It's really nice to be able to actually communicate with people and to also be able to like infuse your own personality into what you're saying. My Serbian is good enough that I can get by, but not so good that I don't end up saying a lot of the same things over and over again. And being able to just fully express myself and add in all my little cute kind of like conversational quirks was really, really nice. And on top of that, Canadians are just definitely friendlier than Serbians like it's this weird paradox because Serbians in some senses are friendly like I feel like it's easier to make friends with people here they are more open it's easier to have conversations with them but what the world says about Canadians is 100% true Canadians are so fucking nice like it is just like bred into our DNA we're just bred to be polite we're bred to be nice to each other like I loved walking into, I remember I had this one experience where I went into a gas station when I was on a road trip and I was just going in there to prepay for my gas and the girl's like, oh, hello, sweetheart. What can I do for you today? Like, 
oh, blah, 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 is that all? Okay, honey, have yourself a great day, you know? And just even like the way that Canadians talk, like the classic like oot and stuff, they have this way of speaking that's just so like funny and comical and sweet. And there's this little part of myself that just feels so at home <laughs> when I'm like speaking to Canadians. And yeah, even when I was at the airport, when I first arrived, I went and ordered a smoothie and me and the girl who was making the smoothie for me, she was so sweet and we were just chit-chatting and she ended up giving me my smoothie and then another smoothie completely for free. And that was within like 30 minutes of me landing back in Canada. And I was just like, yes, <laughs> this is the place, like this is the kind of like hospitality and service and stuff that I'm used to. Um, if you've been to Serbia, then you will definitely know that service is not one of this country's strong points so that was a real treat for me i did really appreciate that that being said though i will say that serbia does feel a lot safer than canada um in canada you just see a lot more people who are on drugs or drinking and a lot more people that just kind of like look sketchy and not to say that they're bad people but for me personally i don't like, I don't really trust what people will do when they are intoxicated. They're not in their right mind. Um, and you just see a lot more of that. I always felt like I was a lot more on my toes, really paying attention to my surroundings. And yeah, I would take my sister's dog for walks every day, like through the trails, like through the river valley by, um, by my place. And yeah, I just constantly felt like I needed to look over my shoulders and be very wary of what was going on around me. And... I felt kind of scared walking through the forest and through the streets sometimes because yeah just me and my friends have all had such bad experiences with like being followed home having people trying to break into our houses being assaulted um yeah canada is just not as safe as it felt when i was growing up so being back in belgrade even though there have been Obviously some things in the past couple months that have happened here that definitely made me question my safety. I would say that overall I do feel a lot safer in Serbia. Another nice thing about Canada and also kind of Serbia because I feel like Serbia is where I developed this appreciation, I guess you could say, for family and community. Um, being back in Canada and being able to connect with people that I've known my entire life, seeing my mom, seeing my sister, seeing my brother, seeing my dad, seeing like my entire extended family, it just felt really, really good. And it's tough because I feel like before living in Serbia, um, I didn't necessarily have the same appreciation of family. But after being here, because people are just so close knit and they're so about community and they're so about taking care of each other, it's really just given me a deeper understanding of how important family is, which is kind of a double-edged sword because now I'm so far away from my family. So it was super nice being there and yeah, just connecting with people and being with people who have known you for your entire life just feels really good for the soul. So I appreciated that a lot. And when I was in Canada uh, to go and visit my dad, I did a 13 hour road trip through the mountains and this is another thing that I'll have to say that Canada has definitely got Serbia beat on. The nature in Canada is so amazing. Like it is just such a stunning country, especially British Columbia. And even they're really intentional about putting a lot of green space into the cities. Like Calgary has this like huge river valley. Like you can just, you can go on trails and just walk for like kilometers and kilometers. And same with Edmonton, like five, 10 minutes away from where I was staying, there is just like, this huge river valley that you can literally just get lost in for the entire day and you don't even feel like you're in a city. And yeah, Belgrade definitely has some like nice green spaces and some beautiful parks, but not on the same level <laughs> that Canada does because there's just so much space in Canada. But regardless of Canada having a ton of beautiful spaces, I do honestly love Belgrade and I missed it a lot while I was gone. The only way that you can really describe Belgrade, I think, is the Wild West. This place is just crazy. Anything goes. It's just constant chaos. I'm trying to learn how to drive right now. And driving in Canada on my 13-hour road trip versus literally, like, driving from my apartment to a cafe is so stressful. There's random Romani 
riding around in the streets on horses. People will stop in the middle of a super busy road, just turn on their blinkers and just park there. People are constantly honking at you. If you don't drive within 1.5 seconds of a light turning green, everybody's honking at you. People are just so like <laughs> ragey here and it's kind of terrifying. But in the same sense, the chaos and there's just always something to do. There's always something going on. Belgrade is a very alive and vibrant city and I do kind of appreciate that. Like I appreciate my peace, I appreciate my nature, but at the same time, I also appreciate the fact that there's always something going on here and always something to, to get up to. And yeah, on that note, like Serbia is just kind of like a, <laughs> a weird place to be. And I love that. I think I sometimes have a hard time being here just because there's really nobody that's doing what I'm doing here. Well, like I'm sure there is, like I'm sure I'm not the only Canadian that's living here. But overall, in terms of random Canadian women that move to Serbia on their own when they have literally no connections, I'm not Serbian at all. I don't have any Serbian families. So I have kind of a hard time not comparing myself to people that I know because everyone's just in Canada or in these normal places living these kind of semi-normal lives. But when I was in Canada, I reconnected with some of those old friends and family members that have literally just been doing the same thing for the last five or 10 years. And in those five or 10 years, I've traveled around the world. I've lived in like, I don't know, five countries spanning three continents in so many different cities. I've seen so much. And I think that I've just realized that I am never going to be that normal person. And I've been spending a lot of time thinking about, oh, what if I had just decided to stay in Vancouver? I had like such a good job, such a beautiful apartment. Like my life in Vancouver was so easy. And sometimes I'm like, why did I give that all up? But in reality, I think that if I was still in Vancouver, just doing my same old, same old that I was before, that I would be super unhappy because that's just not the kind of person that I am. I just, I need the excitement. I need the change. So yeah, going to Canada has definitely made me realize that I am really happy to be here. And I think that this life, even though it's like very far off the beaten path, that it is the right thing for me and that feels good because I was kind of oscillating before I went home I'm like do I want to stay in Canada do I want to stay in Serbia do I want to go back to Canada and I think part of that too came from the fact that I'm always I've been spending a lot of time trying to decide on like the one place that I want to be and I'm like I just need to figure out the one place that I want to be that has all the things that I need and I can just stay there and be there but I have realized that I Think that i need to just have a few different bases like i need to have at least three different bases like canada the balkans and then maybe mexico or something because canada and the balkans are a little bit too cold for me during the winter but i don't think that i'm going to be able to find that one perfect place that meets all my needs and i think that having to meet having to find the one perfect place that meets all my needs is just gonna keep me in a constant state of always having to move around and always having to leave because I'm just realizing there's no such thing as the perfect spot. I think that there's pluses and minuses to every place that you live and it's nice having the opportunity or the option to move around because you're in one place like I'm in Belgrade for four, five, six months and then yeah, the chaos is driving me crazy. The hustle and bustle is driving me crazy. Like the wild west vibes, the lack of rules, everything like that is just getting to be a little bit too much. And it's like, okay, pop to the opposite side of the world, pop to Canada where it's just like very developed, a lot of rules, like a lot of structure. And then when I get tired of that, then pop to Mexico cause it's winter and I fucking hate the cold and made the mistake the last two winters of staying in Serbia. And I will not do that again, so. Yeah, being able to set myself up with a few different locations that I can bounce around to, I think is perfect because then you have you have home base wherever you go, but you're not stuck accepting things that you don't love in one particular place. So yeah, this is my um, post-Canada trip vibes. I actually tried to film this video in Canada 
and I'll link a little video of what I tried to. I tried to go and sit in this gorgeous park with uh, my sister and her dog and her dog or sorry, my sister's dog. And her dog was just crying the entire time. She just sat beside me whining. So I had to pack up the camera, but all is well. This is the time that I was meant to do this video. And I, as I mentioned earlier, I know that a lot of you are waiting for my video about getting started as a freelancer. So that will be coming out in the next week or two. I pinky swear promise. I am on it. I have been wanting to share this with you guys for a super long time. If you are ready to start your freelancing journey, particularly in copywriting, I did make an ebook, a guide on how to get started as a copywriter through popular freelancing websites like Upwork, so you can find that in the description. And otherwise, I will be coming at you guys with some tips in the next week or two. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.